so good day so this will be our first lecture in our online review so at this moment we will be tackling about basic electricity so this will be a five part video in which all of the topics involving basic electricity will be discussed so our first topic for today will be about the men behind electricity so we will be tackling the history of electricity how what are our concepts of electricity so kung paano natin ako ah, sino sino yung mga taong nag uh, nag aral at nagpakadalubhasa sa elektrisidad at kung ano man yung ating naitindihan ngayon ukol sa electricity ay nanggaling sa mga taong ito okay so unahin natin si Thales of Miletus so isa, isa siyang Greek philosopher observed static electricity by rubbing amber so that is uh, noong 600 uh, BC so ang mga Greek ay talagang ano uh, mga tatalin ng tao at isa na ito si Thales of Miletus na kung saan na observe niya ang static electricity so sa pamagitan ng pagrub ng amber So, kadalasan inirap ito sa cloth so, sa, or sheep wool, yung, um, yung wool na galing sa sheep. So, ang word na amber sa Greek word noon is electron at doon nagmula yung uh, word na electron. Then, we have Otto van Gurik. No? So, nakakreate siya ng electron. Electric friction machine in 1660 at siya yung unang naka-observe. So, observe the sound and light of electrical sparks. So, siya yung unang nakapag-observe uh, ng physical property ng elektrisidad. Ang electricity ay may sound at nakikrate ito ng spark. Then we have Luigi Galvani. So, si, Lu si Luigi Galvani, so meron siyang experiment. So, observe that twitching of frog's legs that were in contact with two dissimilar metals and wrongly called the phenomena as animal electricity. So, dati kasi may dalawang concept ang elektrisidad. Yung electricity na artificial or gawa ng tao. So, yun yung sa pabagitan ng, uh, ng, ng, uh, ng battery at yun ding may iba na mga scientist na nagsasabi ang electricity is the manifestation ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Isa na doon si Luigi Galvani na nalaman niya na sa tuwing ilalagay niya yung dalawang uh, dalawang lead so positive and negative terminal ng isang battery ilalagay niya doon sa frog yung paa ng frog ay humagalaw at yun ang natawag niyang animal electricity. So, ang pinakamahigpit na kalaban ni Luigi Galvani ay si Alessandro Giuseppe Antonio Anastasio Volta o mas kailan natin sa tawag na Alessandro Volta. So, he is an Italian physicist, chemist, and, a and pioneer of electricity and power who is, who is credited as the inventor of electric battery and the discoverer of 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 methane. So, si Alessandro Volta, siya yung nag-discredit o nag-disprove sa mga sinasabi ni Luigi Galvani. Sa kanya, pwede, na, pwede ang tao ay gumawa ng electricity. At siya nga yung naka-invent o nakagawa ng kauna-unahang battery. So, at, so, at dahil doon ay na-prove ni, ni Alessandro Volta na ang electricity is not purely a manifestation of the power of God na pwede ang tao ay mag-generate ng electricity. Then we have Sir William Watson so improve the Leyden jar for strong electric uh, for storing electricity and work out an early theory of electricity. So si Sir William Watson so Uh, in-improve niya ang Leyden jar. So kung tinan nyo ano, ano yung Leyden jar, ang Leyden jar ang pinaka-una-unahang um, kapasitor. So ang purpose ng Leyden jar is doon ini-store ang static electricity at kung 
yung dalawang terminal ay nilagyan mo ng um, so biyari isang 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 conductor yung yung leading jar ay nagdi-discharge din ng static electricity so in principle ang leading jar ang kauna-unahang kapasitor then we have Benjamin Franklin so siguro alam natin lahat dito ang kung sino si Benjamin Franklin so si Benjamin Franklin ang nag-develop ng condenser for storing static electricity first recognized lightning with with electricity with his famous kite experiment in 1752 develop the fluid theory of electricity then he guessed wrong about the direction of current flow which is from positive to negative so later videos we will discuss about the current flow no so current flow so si Benjamin Franklin uh, ang ginawa niya is nagkamali siya kung paano o uh, nagkamali siya sa pag describe ng flow of electricity according to him that electricity or current will flow from positive to negative so that is um, contradicting to our actual perception of electricity in which later on we will we will discover what causes electricity or we will be tackling what causes electricity and we will find out kung bakit naging mali si Benjamin Franklin aside from that Uh, he developed also the fluid theory of electricity in which sinabi niya na ang elektrisidad ay parang tubig na nasa tubo. So, it will flow. Then, ang, kung saan siya pinakasikat is yung kanyang kite experiment in which some of the historians are are contradicting the reality of the experiment. Some says that hindi talaga si Benjamin Franklin ang nag-experiment sa pamagitan ng kite but uh, kung, kung ano man uh, Benjamin Franklin is is um, the one who is credited for um, for uh, proving that lighting is a form of electricity so ang kidlat ay isang form ng electricity at later on we will Um, we will find out that lightning is a form of static electricity. Then we have John Dalton. So, si John Dalton, uh, he uh, gave the theory that matter that can be broken down into fundamental con constituents or, or elements or tiniest particle called atom. So, si John Dalton yung nagsabi or nag-theory, nagbigay siya ng theory na ang matter ay pwede natin i-broken up to smaller pieces. So, ano ang kalagahan nito sa electricity? So, by doing that, by uh, by the theory of Dalton, we'll find out that the actual particle of matter is the reason why we have electricity. So, we have Neil Bohr, Niels Bohr and Lord Rutherford. So, silang dalawa yung gumawa ng structure ng atom. So, we, we will find out later what is the actual structure of atom but to them, the actual structure of atom resembles a miniature solar system. So, tayong lahat, alam natin solar system. So, sa gitna, nandun yung sun, tapos may nag-orbit na mga planets. Ganun nila um, uh, ginawa ang structure ng atom. So, sa kanilang mismong theory, sabi nila, there are there is a few, uh, there are particles in the center of the of the atom and there are also particles revolving around the center so we will find out that later then we have thomas alba uh, thomas alva edison so for short sa mga gustong wala man kuno ang acronym ito so kadalasan sila sabi natin si tae no thomas alba edison is one of the Uh, uh, one of the American inventor and maybe we could say the, he is the GOAT no? so the greatest inventor of all time greatest American inventor of all time at siya yung may pinakamaraming patent so sa Amerika then he developed many devices in fields such as electric power generation mass communication, sound recording and motion pictures so at the early Um, life or the early career of Thomas Alba Edison nag-focus muna siya doon sa light bulb 
No? So he was he was somewhat credited as the inventor of the light bulb, no? The light bulb. Then after that, he pushes that the electric power generation or the electrical grid must be DC system. Then from that, nagpunta siya sa mass communication yung kaniyang uh, telegraph uh, kung saan po ito uh, no, that is the telegraph, phonograph kung saan pwede mong i-record ang iyong boses hanggang sa napunta siya sa uh, motion pictures in which he invented a camera for recording at ang kaniyang ni-record ay yung Niagara Falls. Then we have Nikola Tesla, so the rival of Edison. So he is a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist who is best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electricity supply system. So si Edison sa kanya is dapat ang iting electrical grid is DC because for Edison it is much uh, safer. So, hindi daw masyadong delikado ang DC system. But for Nikola Tesla, the DC system is inefficient if for longer distances. Kasi daw mas madaming voltage, mas malaki yung voltage drop if that is also only a DC system. So, for example, if, if mag DC system tayo, for example, ginagamit natin yung DC system, for every one mile, mayroon tayong dapat isang uh, substation. Yun yung um, sinabi ni Nikola Tesla. So, ang uh, Nikola Tesla is kanyang inadvocate yung AC system. In which AC system, you can uh, transmit higher voltages at longer distances. So, yan yung kay Nikola Tesla. At, at, uh, at the end, um, sa atin naman yun, so alam natin na ginagamit natin is AC system. So, naging mas tama or naging tama si Nikola Tesla. Then we have Andre Marie Ampere, so a French physicist and mathematician who was one of the founders of the science of classical electromagnetism which he referred to as electrodynamics. He is also the inventor of numerous applications such as the solenoid and the electrical telegraph. So si Andre Ampere talaga is nag-focus sa electromagnetism. The the phenomenon in which electricity and magnetism are combined as one physical phenomenon. So, yan yung si Andre Mary Ampere. At alam naman natin that from his uh, name, kinuha natin yung um, unit ng current, which is Ampere. Then we have George Simon Ohm. So, he is a German physicist and mathematician. So, a school teacher. Ohm be became his research with the electrochemical cell invented by Italian scientist Alessandro Volta. Then, using the equipment of his own creation, Ohm found that there is a direct proportionality between the potential difference, the voltage applied across a conductor, and the resultant electric current. So, this relationship is known as Ohm's law. So, si George Simon Ohm's yung nakadiscover or naka uh, uh, naka-formulate ng Ohm's Law. Then we have Charles Augustine de Coulomb, so a French military engineer and physicist. He is best known as the um, discoverer of what is what is now called as the Coulomb's Law. So the description of the electrostatic force of attraction and repulsion, though he is he is he also did important work on friction. So, si Coulomb's law nagsabi na charges, like charges attract, and un, uh, like charges repel, and unlike charges attract. So, that is the exact the, the exact statement of Ohm's law, in which it is very important sa ating pagsastudy ng electrostatics. Then we have Michael Faraday, so a English scientist who contributed to the study of electromagnetism and elect Chemistry. His main discoveries include the principles of underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and electrolysis. So, yan yung naibigay ni Michael Faraday. So, sa kanya talaga nagmula yung electromagnetic induction. Then we have Joseph Henry. So, an American scientist and engineer. So, why building electromagnets? 
he discovered the electromagnetic phenomena of self-inductance. He also discovered mutual inductance independently of Michael Faraday, but Faraday was the first to publish his result. So, si, he, si Joseph Henry, so na-discover niya or nagawa niya yung uh, discover niya yung electromagnetic phenomena of self-inductance. So, later on, we will be tackling about inductance so, sa mga later na video. Then, also the mutual inductance, pero ang nangyari lang is mas nauna na-publish ni Faraday ang result. Kaya si Faraday yung, yung nabigyan ng credit or sa atin ngayon ay ating kinikilala bilang uh, the father of electromagnetic induction. Then we have James Clerk Maxwell, so a Scottish scientist in the field of mathematical physics. So his most notable achievement was to formulate the classical theory of electromagnetic radiation, bringing together for the first time electricity, magnetism, and light as different manifestation of the same phenomenon. So, si Michael Faraday mismo yung nag-combine ng dalawang phenomenon, electricity and, magnet and magnetism into one physical phenomenon which is electromagnetism. Paano niya ginawa yun? Uh, mayroon siyang five uh, Maxwell's equation of electromagnetism. Sa five na equation na yun, doon maproprove ang 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 relationship between electricity and magnetism. So, ang five equation na yun ay kadalasang tinatakol sa mga electrical engineering courses. Pero sa mass electrician, hindi yun masyadong uh, binibigyan ng uh, pansin, lalo na sa exam. Kasi it is purely uh, mathematical physics. No? Mathematical physics. Then we will have James Watt, so a Scottish inventor, mechanical engineer, and chemist who improved on uh, Thomas Newcomen's 1712 Newcomen steam engine with his Watt steam engine in 1776, which was fundamental to the changes brought by the Industrial Revolution in both his native Great Britain and the rest of the world. So, before the, the, the advent of electricity, we have a steam engine. So, the steam engine is rated in uh, horsepower. No? Then, um, James Watt created a much efficient steam engine. So, ka, sa pag-improve niya nung, yung mga existing na yun, yung new common steam engine. And aside from that, because James Watt was considered one, uh, one of the inventor who invented an efficient engine, sa kanya pinangalan yung power, which is watts. So, ang unit ng power is taken from James Watt. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz, so a German physicist who first conclusively proved the existence of electromagnetic waves, which is predicted by James Clerk Maxwell's equation of electromagnetism. So, so Heinrich Rudolf Hertz ang nag-prove na mayroon talagang electromagnetic waves because one of the equations of Maxwell's uh, will not be valid if hindi mapuprove na may electromagnetic wave. That is that that the um, that is the electromagnetism can be transmitted using waves. No? So it is also um, said by James Clerk Maxwell that light is a form of electromagnetic wave. And that was proven by Heinrich Rudolf Hertz by his experiments. Then we have Ernst Werner von Siemens. So he's a German electrical engineer, invented and inventor and industrialist. So sorry for the some of the words no na mamalin natin sa pagsalita. So Siemens name has been adopted as the SI unit of electrical conductance. So ang um, unit ng conductance is Siemens. He was also the founder of a, of the electrical and telecommunications company Siemens. So siguro sa lahat ninyo is familiar sa brand na Siemens. Invented a telegraph that is use a needle to point to the right letter instead of using Morse code. So ang pinaka um, highlight ng career ni Siemens is um, making the Morse, uh, the Morse code a somewhat a thing of the past. Kasi nakaibento siya ng telegraph na mismo letra yung tinuturo. Hindi yung dot 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 kung saan yung dot 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 is using is can be um, is a way which is we know as the Morse code. 
Then we have Wilhelm Eduard Weber, so was a German physicist and together with Carl Friedrich Gauss, inventor of the first electromagnetic telegraph. So si Weber at si yung kasunod dito, si Gauss ang nakagawa ng first na electromagnetic telegraph which, use, uh, which uses uh, Morse code. So Gauss is a German mathematician and physicist who made significant contribution to many fields in mathematics and science. Sometimes referred to as the Princeps Maticorium, so Latin for the form, foremost of mathematicians and the greatest mathematician since antiquity. So, si Carl Friedrich Gauss. Then we have Hans Christian Orsted, so a Danish physicist and chemist who discovered that electric currents created mag, create magnetic fields, which was the first connection found between electricity and magnetism. So, so for, si Orsted yung kauna-unahang naka, uh, nakapansin na may connection between electricity and magnetism. So, sa kanya, nakita niya na ang electric current will create a magnetic field. So, parang, parang magnet din. Nakapag magnet, nag attract ng, um, ng mga metal. So, yung electric current naman kung nag kung nagpapadaan ka ng current sa wire tapos mayroon kang compass malapit doon yung compass ay nagtuturo doon sa yung dito ng compass ay uh, directly pointing the electrical current so meaning ang electrical current has also its own magnetic field then we have Alexander Graham Bell a Scottish born American inventor scientist and engineer who is credited with inventing and and the patent, the first practical telephone. So, siya yung, siya yung naka-invento ng telephone. He is also co-founded the American Telephone and Telegraph Company in 1885. Okay, so that will be our discussion for the men behind electricity. So, the next video will be about atomic theory. So, I hope you learn um, um, something. So, I hope na nakilala niyo na kung sino sino yung mga important tao sa field ng electricity. And then also forgot to mention also we have also Albert Einstein, yung mga iba pa. Pero those people na ating na-discuss, sila yung talagang nakafocus or nagpaunlad uh, ang ating kaalaman tungkol sa electricity. At if may tanong kayo, you can comment uh, below this video or doon sa nakasama sa ating Google Classroom. So pwede kayong mag-comment doon sa iba ba. At I will do my best to answer your questions. So hope you hope na pag, sa next na video kapanawarin ito. At kung mayroon man akong mga mispronounced na words or ano pa dyan na medyo mali sa video na ito. So you can freely comment that so that we can improve our discussion. So see you again next time. Keep studying.